Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And today we are going to, oh, by the way, I am Puan Suryati. Hi, Del. I am Puan Suryati. So today we are going to continue with paper two. Okay, we are going to continue with paper two, SPM. Okay, so we are going to continue with paper two, SPM uh, 2020, not yet 2021, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Sorry for the technical errors. Okay, can you see my screen? All right, so today we are going to do revision. Uh, on paper two, I'm not going to go uh, very detailed because uh, if I go very detailed, we are not going to have time, right? But uh, I'll try my best to touch um, to touch things that can help you uh, to answer the questions uh, correctly. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to discuss with you. I'm going to uh, try to show you uh, there are ways that we can uh, that can help you to answer the questions. Okay. Uh, there are ways uh, in identifying the keywords, uh, in understanding the question. So uh, basically, paper two is actually uh, answerable. I mean, it is, uh, it is um, you will be able to answer at least as compared to paper one, right? Okay. So let's see what's in paper two. Okay. Um, we are going to look at the format, okay, for each sections. Uh, and we are going to look at the quick tips on how to go about uh, each section. Uh, we are going to also um, look at uh, popular vocabs uh, to help you to understand uh, the popular questions, okay, the sentence patterns, the question patterns, okay, and we're also going to do uh, the question, okay, after each uh, format, we are going to try a few questions, okay, we are not going to do a full, a complete set, but we are going to touch a few questions based on previous uh, year's paper, okay. Uh, so bear with me. I hope you can have a paper and pen with you because I want you to answer and discuss the answers with me. Okay, so it is easier for you to understand, right? Okay, so let me let uh, let me do the revision here. Okay, let me explain to you again in case you have forgotten. All right, paper two, we have 70 marks. Okay, we have section A, section B, section C, and section D. Okay, section A, multiple choice questions, 50 marks. We have section B, information transfer, 10 marks. We have section C, reading comprehension and summary, 25 marks. And finally, we have section D, literature, 20 marks. We have poems and we have a novel, a novel. Okay, so this is basically uh, your paper two for SPM 2020, which is a month away from now. Okay. All right, section A. Uh, section A is known as objective part, right? You love uh, section A because you are given choices of answers. Okay, so, but there are ways to help you to choose the best answer because the questions and answers are designed uh, to confuse you, okay? To test whether you can infer, whether you can understand, whether you can uh, get the concept, whether you can understand the main idea from what is given to you. 
Okay, so questions one to eight are based on a variety of graphic materials. What does it mean by graphic materials? We're going to see after this, okay? And short text such as labels, word signs, tables, charts, and many more. Okay, students uh, often need to rely on both their language and knowledge. So meaning you need to know the language and you also need to know what is going on around you. You need to have the general knowledge. You need to have a... Uh, uh, experience the uh, the labels uh, around you you need to uh, you have to I'm, I'm sure most of you came across uh, the signage uh, the posters when you are in the car uh, on the way to school right so those are the things that you also need to uh, to know to familiarize yourself because some of the questions are taken straight away from the uh, from the public from the the one uh, the posters around you the signage around you okay all right Okay, graphic materials and short text. Okay, we have diagrams. Okay, we have many types of diagrams, but here I've only listed a few. Okay, we have tables, we have graphs, we have labels, we have signs, we even have comic strips. Okay, we also have uh, articles. Okay, you also you will also see uh, questions like articles. Okay, you are given uh, newspaper clips, you are given posters, you are given uh, many things, right? Many types of questions uh, for many types of stimuli in uh, section A. Okay, we also have the famous one, advertisements, okay? Again, they give you advertisements in a form of tables, in a form of graphs, in a form of signs, in a form of uh, posters, uh, in a form of extract, okay? An extract from a novel, an extract from, from a book, uh, famous quotation, proverbs, idioms. So there are so, so many types of stimuli uh, a, for section A. So it can be anything, okay? And... Uh, also, in for graphic materials and short text, they can also give you questions uh, like a dialogue. Okay, the, maybe the, the dialogue uh, is discussing about uh, tips, ways, or methods of doing something. Okay, so these are basically um, the uh, the favorite one, the most popular ones that are being asked in SPM questions for section A, question one to question eight. Okay, all right. So these are among, uh, this is what I mentioned just now, okay? You see uh, the posters around, you can see the labels, you can see the signages, you can see the pamphlet, you can see the bro brochure. So these are the things that might be in SPM question, okay? They want you to integrate your knowledge, your language knowledge, and also your general knowledge uh, in answering the question, in answering section A, question one until question eight, okay? Okay, how to answer correctly, okay? Uh, so basically, uh, there are three things that you need to do in order uh, to help you to choose the best answer. If you notice the choice of answers given from A to D, okay, are almost uh, the same. Okay, sometimes uh, at a first glance, it seems like everything is correct. Okay, so there are ways for to help you to choose the best answer. Remember, the keyword here is to choose the best answer, to choose the closest one. Okay. To choose the most accurate one okay the others might be the might be correct but that's not accurate that's not uh, the most accurate one okay all right so first thing first okay for all the questions any question of course you need to read okay you need to read word by word okay read the question carefully and try to understand it okay read the whole text do not jump anything do not leave anything behind, okay? You need to read because you need to know what is it, uh, what is the question is asking from you, okay? So after you have read the question, it's time for you to analyze, okay? What does it mean by analyze, okay? Once you have read the question, of course, you have to do, what you have to do is to, uh, is to uh, identify the keywords that can help you to, uh, to choose the best answer, okay? If you can find any of the answers that you are surely that you confident that is not the answer, please cancel it out. So you will have, you will be left with only less choices so easier for you to choose the best one, okay? And always uh, read the headline, the title, because usually the title, the headline of the question is actually the idea of the whole text, the idea of the whole question. So do not skip anything.
Okay. And thirdly, okay, the third step is to familiarize yourself. Okay. Before you go to, to the hall, to the exam hall, make sure you are familiar with the uh, question format. You are familiar with the common terms, common words, common phrases used in section A. Okay. I'm very sure your teachers have given you many many uh, questions on section A, many sets from others, uh, many sets uh, from trial papers from other states, uh, previous years' questions. So, you actually, if you notice, uh, the patterns are almost the same. Okay, the words that you came across, the vocab that you came across is almost the same, right? Okay, so from there, you will be able to choose the most suitable answer. Okay, so that's about it uh, on steps, on ways, on tips on how to choose the best answer for section A. Okay, all right. So let us uh, go through at least a few, a few types of um, commonly used words. Okay? Uh, okay, the first one, okay, the famous one uh, for question number one until number eight, uh, advertisement. Okay, uh, so there are many types of advertisements, right? So I'm, I'm going to give you a few examples of advertisements, okay? The famous one, the, for, uh, the, the popular ones, okay? So the first one is job vacancies, okay? What does it mean by job vacancies? Kerja kosong, ataupun nak minta kerja, okay? So jenis, uh, jenis iklan, advertisement is iklan, okay? Uh, iklan ni... Uh, ialah tentang untuk memohon pekerjaan, nak minta kerja. So, antara perkataan-perkataan, okay, among the common words, among the common phrases that you can relate to job vacancies, okay, to job application are this. Okay, qualification, minimum experience. Kalau ada soalan tentang job uh, application ataupun job vacancies, you akan jumpa perkataan ni. Okay, qualification ataupun minimum experience. Okay, what does it mean by qualification? What does it mean by minimum experience? Okay, qualification adalah kelayakan. Okay, sometimes the the, the advertisement uh, is telling that uh, you need to at least have a degree uh, ataupun you need to have at least a, a three years of experience. So, itulah dia. So, memang if the question is about uh, job vacancies, usually you will came across all these words. Okay. Ability to communicate. Apa maksud ability to communicate? Okay. Kebolehan untuk berkomunikasi. Proficient. Cakap. Okay. Essential. Preferably male. Okay. Essential. Penting. Preferably male or female. Maksudnya, uh, preferably ni maksudnya uh, lebih suka ataupun lebih uh, kalau boleh nak male, kalau boleh nak female. So, semua ni selalunya akan ada dalam uh, advertisement tentang job vacancies. Okay. And also, this is the qualification. Ah, so, in order for you to answer the qualification, ni lah dia. SPM, diploma or equivalent. Apa maksud equivalent? Okay, equivalent tu maksudnya setara. Okay, sama. Katakanlah dia kata dia, dia diploma or equivalent. Maksudnya, kalau you ada diploma ataupun you ada SPMB tahap 3, so itu adalah equivalent dengan equi diploma. Ah, so, dia nak macam tu. Itu maksud equivalent. Okay. Lepas tu, you selalunya akan jumpa juga perkataan walk in interview. Apa maksud dia walk in interview? Maksudnya kita kena pergi interview secara berdepan. Okay. Lepas tu shortlisted candidates. Apa maksud shortlisted, can, shortlisted candidates? Maksud shortlisted candidates ni ialah uh, calon. Candidates ni calon kan? Shortlisted ni maksudnya calon-calon yang sudah dipilih ke stage seterusnya. Ha, maksudnya kalau daripada 100 orang yang pergi walk in interview tu, so dia dah pilih, dia dah interview, akhirnya dia hanya ada 30 orang yang tak akhir. So 30 orang yang tak akhir itulah yang kita panggil shortlisted. Okay, okay working experience sama dengan uh, minimum experience tadi lah. Okay, working experience, uh, pengalaman bekerja, ability to work. Ability means kebolehan untuk bekerja. Dan independence, selalunya pekerja, okay, uh, selalunya sekarang ni kebanyakan uh, boss, kebanyakan majikan, okay, most of them are searching for uh, workers okay, who can work independently. Okay, mereka suka kalau orang tu uh, ber, boleh bekerja sendiri, independent ni maksudnya berdikari kan. Okay, berdikari di sini maksudnya dia boleh bekerja sendiri tanpa pantauan boss. Maksudnya tak curi tulang, dia akan kerja on time, dia buat kerja, masa kerja dia kerja uh, macam tu. Itu maksudnya independence ni. Okay, so semua ni you will be, you will, came across, you will come across if you uh, 
C, a question related to job vacancies. Okay, so this is number one. Okay, advertisement on job vacancies. Okay, next one is, uh, okay, ini lagi, ini pun sama juga. Okay, banyak lagi phrases yang, yang sebenarnya uh, you came across so many times but sometimes you tend to forget the meaning. Okay, so here we are going to do the revision. That's why I'm here for you. Okay, so added advantage. Apa, ad, added advantages maksudnya, um, special qualities over other candidates people or other people. Maksudnya, kalau uh, pekerja tu dia nak uh, pekerja yang boleh bercakap dalam bahasa Melayu dan bahasa Inggeris. Tiba-tiba you pandai cakap bahasa Cina. Ha, mungkin itu adalah added advantage untuk you. Kelebihan yang melebihi orang lain. Ha, okay, lepas tu commensurate with experience. Okay, maksudnya uh, experience yang you, yang you ada tu menepati dengan kerja yang you minta sekarang ni. Okay, essential. Uh, penting, okay, uh, fringe benefit, maksudnya ada extra bonus given to the right candidates such as allowance, company, okay, kadang-kadang bila you menepati semua kehendak uh, job job tu, okay, you boleh listkan apa yang you nak, okay, contohnya uh, extra bonus kalau you boleh cakap bahasa Cina tadi, uh, macam tu, okay, so perkataan-perkataan ni kena biasakan, okay, kalau soalan itulah keluar, inilah dia perkataan-perkataan yang you akan jumpa, okay, so this will help you to understand the question. Okay, preferable saya, uh, pre preferable saya dah explain tadi. Okay, proficient maksudnya orang itu ialah cekap, skilled. Okay, qualification, remuneration, okay, payment for work. Okay, uh, shortlist candidate saya dah explain and walk-in interview pun saya dah explain. So basically, nampak tak berulang-ulang perkataan yang sama. Kalau itulah konteksnya, ah, inilah maksud dia konteks. Kalau soalan dia keluar tentang job vacancy, inilah dia konteks uh, perkataan, konteks yang you akan jumpa. So, uh, I hope after this session, kalau keluar soalan tentang job, you jumpa perkataan-perkataan ni, you know what to do. You know how to answer the question. Okay, so that's why I'm telling you, familiarize yourself with these common words and phrases. Okay, next. Okay, the, fa the second famous uh, one, okay. Uh, advertisement on sales or promotion. Banyak soalan yang suka sangat bagi tentang sales or promotion. So memang kalau you notice, you can see the word special offer, discount up to, rebate, free gift, promotion includes, excludes. Okay, promotion includes ni maksudnya promotion tu termasuk ataupun promotion, promotion tidak termasuk. Excludes maksudnya tidak termasuk. Okay, while stock lah, sementara stock masih ada. Ha, famous dengan kan, benda ni sangat familiar memang awak selalu dengar kat TV. So these are the things that they're going to put in your question. Okay, one one year warranty guarantee okay o n o ha ni pun kadang-kadang uh, jarang jumpa tapi ada okay or nearest offer okay ataupun uh, tawaran yang paling hampir okay negotiable boleh di runding okay buy one free one <coughs> okay what's up last lagi okay and so on so semua ni uh, berkaitan dengan sales of promotion so bila awak jumpa perkataan-perkataan ni you know it will help you to choose the best answer okay next <coughs> Sama juga macam tadi, uh, common phrases and common words yang related to sales and promotion. Clearance sales, closing down sale, discount, down payment, excellent, tip-top, mean condition. Nampak macam uh, pelik kan tapi inilah maksud dia. Sama je dengan excellent, sama je dengan tip-top. Okay, looking new and in perfect condition. Okay, guarantee, warranty or assurance, or nearest offer, less or best offer. Warranty, a written promise made. Kan kalau kita beli barang elektrik, kita akan diberi kad jaminan kan. So itulah dia warranty. Okay. Okay, next. Announcement. Okay. Soalan berbentuk announcement. Okay, graph. Uh, uh, the question is uh, is about an event and they want to make an announcement. Uh, pun boleh jadi juga sebagai uh, one of the question in section A. Okay. Uh, so the common words related to announcements and special events adalah Call now for reservations. Pernah dengar kan? Okay, call now for reservations. Okay, uh, hubungi kami sekarang untuk uh, tempahan. Reservations ialah tempahan. Visit our website. Ah, ini saya rasa semua orang dah faham sekarang kan? Visit our website maksudnya kena lawati laman sesawang mereka. Okay, apply online. Okay, uh, maksudnya kena mohon secara atas talian. Okay, so saya rasa awak lagi faham bahasa Inggeris, bahasa Inggeris daripada bahasa Melayu sekarang kan? Apply online. So everybody knows what is a apply online now. Okay, visit our website. Okay, because you are 
so used to it now okay you are so you have been you have been exposed to these words now so that's why um, you understand this one better than bahasa melayu now right okay okay what about for more details information contact inclusive of in exclusive of enroll now entry requirements okay next educational opportunities okay selain pada advertisement tentang events kita ada juga educational opportunities berkaitan dengan education okay uh, think words ataupun phrases yang berkaitan dengan education okay course available ataupun course offered okay duration ni sangat banyak soalan yang menggunakan perkataan duration okay duration intake comments part time full time Entrance qualification. Apa maksud entrance qualification? Apa maksud requirements? Kalau nak masuk universiti kan dia ada gariskan panduan. Okay, result kena dapat macam ni baru boleh masuk kos ni. Itulah dia maksudnya entrance qualification. Okay. Uh, fees payable. Apa maksud dia? Fees payable. Okay. Uh, yuran boleh dibayar kepada siapa. Okay. Ataupun fees requirement. Ke keperluan uh, untuk bayar yuran adalah seperti ini. Okay, interview, contact for further information, registration, higher education. So, semua ni berkaitan dengan education. Okay, next. Okay, commonly used words for educational opportunities. Okay, ada kadang-kadang ada juga jumpa dalam iklan tu, uh, dia tulis 2 plus 1. Apa maksud 2 plus 1? Okay, mungkin, okay, most probably the question is referring to two years of study will be done locally while the final year will be done overseas ataupun mungkin vice versa okay maybe maybe the poster is talking uh, the advertisement is talking about two years of study will be done uh, overseas while the final year will be done locally so it can be uh, it can be uh, vice versa so you have to read the uh, advertisement carefully okay Next one can be the same the same idea three plus zero okay all three years of programming can be done locally or overseas okay correspondence course a set of lesson received by mail okay counseling course preview entry qualification equivalent nampak susah tapi if you know this concept you know that these words these phrases are related to education inshallah you can choose the best answer because you know all the meaning can all right next okay so this is a sample from spn 2017 uh question number three is an advertisement was an advertisement okay turn your smartphone into an atm card okay so remember what i told you just now always look at the title look at the heading because that's the that basically will tell you the idea of the whole thing Okay, so by reading the uh, <clears throat> by reading the title, turn your smartphone into an ATM card. We know that they, this question is talking about how a smartphone can be used uh, to something related to money. ATM card is we use it to withdraw money, right? So must be something to do with money. Okay, so your smartphone just got smarter now that it's also your automated automated teller machine ATM itu maksud ATM card okay uh, you can get cash ah nampak tak you can get cash from selected local banks by just using your connect mobile app at the ATM apa maksud ayat ni anda boleh mendapatkan wang tunai daripada selected selected maksudnya hanya bank-bank terpilih okay selected local banks by just hanya dengan menggunakan connect mobile app. Connect mobile app ni macam uh, macam apps yang ada dalam telefon tu lah. Okay, kita download dalam phone dan kita gunakan dekat machine ATM, at the ATM. Okay, maksudnya kena pergi dekat machine tu tapi kita guna phone. Ha, macam tu. Okay, enjoy this cardless. Maksudnya tak perlu nak keluarkan card daripada wallet masuk dalam machine. Okay, Enjoy this cutless service 24 hours a day. Okay, so basically bila kita baca, oh kita dah faham. Uh, card ATM kita boleh bantu kita keluarkan duit tanpa menggunakan card. Cardless tu maksudnya tanpa card. Tak payah nak keluarkan card macam sekarang ni, kita pergi bank, kita cocok card, uh, baru kita boleh keluarkan duit kan. But if you are using Connect Mobile App, dia kata tak perlu. Alright, so now we get the idea of the whole question, right? Okay. Let's see the uh, let's see 
uh, what the question is all about. Okay, actually, the the ideal way or the best way is to always read the question first. Ah, okay. Sebenarnya nak bantu awak uh, menjawab lebih tepat ataupun dengan senang nak cari jawapan ialah dengan membaca soalan terlebih dahulu. Okay, you read the question first. Kenapa kena baca soalan dulu? Sebab kita nak tahu kita ni nak baca tentang apa. Apa pesis yang kat atas tu nak cakap. Okay, so bila kita tengok the advertisement says that. Okay, so kita tahu kita akan baca satu iklan. Okay, the advertisement says that. Okay, dia kata iklan di atas ni cakap. Okay, A. Smartphones can be connected to ATM. So bila kita baca nanti, kita akan cari keyword dia. Adakah uh, smartphone ni boleh connected to any. Ha, nampak tak perkataan ini? So ini adalah keyword dia. Okay, keyword untuk soalan, uh, untuk choice A. Lepas B, dia cakap apa? New bank cards will be issued to smartphone users. So yang kita kena tengok, kalau kita nak pilih B, kena ada perkataan new bank cards. Kalau kita nak pilih jawapan C, kena ada perkataan payments. Ha, payments can be made using the connect mobile app. Dan kalau kita nak pilih D, kena ada perkataan Uh, withdraw money. Okay. Connect mobile app enables users to withdraw money. Okay. Membolehkan orang keluarkan duit. So bila kita baca, bila kita baca, kita cari bukti dulu. Okay. We try to find uh, the closest keywords. Okay. Let's say for A. Kita nak pilih A. Smartphones can be connected to any ATM. So keyword here any. Sedangkan dekat sini tadi cakap selected. So, so automatically kita tahu A salah. Sebabnya bukan semua bank boleh terima. Hanya selected. So kita dah boleh pangkah jawapan A. So now we continue with B. New bank cards will be issued to smartphone users. Ada tak idea of new bank cards? Memang definitely tak ada cakap pasal new bank cards. So kita cancel B. So now we are left with only two choices. Ha, nampak tak betapa mudahnya bila kita dah identify the keywords from the questions. Okay. Lepas tu C pula. Payments. Adakah uh, Iklan ni bercakap tentang payment. So kita carilah bukti di mana ada cakap tentang payment. Tidak ada. So payments can be made using the sedangkan yang uh, actually advertisement ni bercakap tentang get cash. So payments memang tidak ada di dalam soalan. So A, B, C kita memang very sure dia salah. So that's why the best choice is D. Okay. Sebab apa perkataan get cash ni sama dengan withdraw, mendapatkan duit. Okay, so kalau kita biasa dengan perkataan-perkataan ni, we are familiar with this vocabulary, we are familiar with these words, insyaAllah we can find the correct answer. Okay, like this one, withdraw, sama maksud dia dengan get cash from the ATM machine. Okay, so dapat tak the idea now how to find the answers? Okay, bila you familiar with all these words, just now yang kita list tadi tu, It can help you to understand the keywords from the questions, from the choices of answers and kita akan nampak dengan jelas yang mana salah dan yang mana betul. Ha, sebab tu sangat membantu bila kita uh, faham vocabulary yang berkaitan dengan konteks soalan. Okay. And if you notice juga soalan ni berkaitan dengan apa yang berlaku dalam kehidupan seharian kita. Ha, inilah maksudnya general knowledge yang dia tekankan tadi mula-mula. Okay, so now any questions so far, you can type in the chat comments. All right, so I'm going to proceed. Okay, next question. Ah, lambat pula jawapan keluar ya. Okay, next is SPM 2018. Saya suka ambil soalan SPM because I can show you uh, terus, saya boleh terus tunjukkan macam mana pattern soalan dalam SPM yang sebenar. Okay, so soalan ni ialah tentang advertisement juga. Kalau tadi advertisement tentang Uh, something to do with money kan okay, Sekarang ni advertisement dia dalam bentuk table Ingat tak saya cakap tadi diagram dia boleh jadi dalam bentuk table So this is one of the examples in SPM 2018 Okay remember just now kita buat balik step by step Okay first step baca soalan Okay the main purpose of the advertisement is Okay apa keyword dalam soalan ni Dia nak tahu main purpose Okay, ini memang advertisement dia nak tahu main purpose. Apa maksud main? Ha, selalu jumpa kan main purpose, main idea. Ha, maksudnya utama. Jadi purpose ni maksudnya tujuan. Jadi tujuan utama. So kita tahu 
Lepas ni bila kita baca iklan ni kita kena cari tujuan utama iklan ni dikeluarkan. Okey, kita tengok pilihan jawapan dulu. Okey, A. To advise people with the virus to seek at treatment. So kita tahu oh, adakah iklan ni fungsi dia untuk memberi nasihat? Ha. To advise people with the virus to seek treatment. Dia kata kalau orang tu ada virus, advise people with the virus maksudnya orang tu dah kena virus. Okey untuk mendapatkan rawatan. Seek ni maksudnya mencari ataupun mendapatkan rawatan. Okey. Yang kedua dia bagi pilihan jawapan. Oh saya dah bagi jawapan. Tengok tu dia keluar terus. Okey. B to explain, C to encourage, D to inform. Okey kenapa jawapan dia C? Kenapa jawapan dia C? Sebab sebabnya okay, kita kena baca jugalah walaupun jawapan saya dah keluar kan. Okay, the influenza, uh, the influenza virus dulu uh, H1N1 yang paling bahaya kan. Sekarang ni COVID lagi bahaya. Okay, so the influenza virus H1N1 is over for now. But that doesn't mean we should let our gut down. Apa maksud dia we should let our gut down? Maksudnya kita tak perlu berhati-hati. Okay, kita tak boleh berhenti berhati-hati. Okay. Okay. Every year the virus affects many families. So adakah ini menjawab mana-mana tadi? Advise, explain, encourage, inform? Tak ada kan? Hanya memberi statement. Okay. Elderly people and young children are the most likely to be affected. Dia kata orang tua, orang yang berumur dan kanak-kanak adalah yang paling uh, tinggi risiko dia untuk dijangkiti. Ada tak bercakap tentang ni dekat dalam empat-empat ni? Tak ada. Okay. Did you know? Uh, tahukah anda? It is a world it is a worldwide problem. Okey masalah H1N1 ni bukan masalah di Malaysia sahaja sama macam COVID masalah seluruh dunia masalah global. Okey it puts many people in hospital true it can be prevented with a yearly vaccination. Kalau H1N1 ni dah ada vaksin COVID ni kita belum tahu kan. Okey Who should be vaccinated? Siapakah yang perlu divaksin? Siapakah yang perlu menerima vaksin? Okay. Children age 6 months and above. Dia kata orang yang perlu mendapatkan vaksin tersebut, vaksin H1N1 ialah anak-anak yang berumur 6 bulan dan ke atas ataupun adults dewasa yang ada masalah kesihatan. Medical conditions maksud dia masalah kesihatan ataupun orang yang berumur 65 tahun ke atas. So ini adalah yang berisiko tinggi. Okey dan juga orang yang patut dapat vaksin adalah health care workers and those who come in contact with them. Maksudnya orang yang bekerja dengan H1N1 ni, pesakit H1N1 ni perlu mendapatkan vaksin. Lepas tu last kali dia tulis huruf besar. Get your vaccination today. Dapatkan vaksin anda sekarang. Okey so kita dah tahu, kita dah baca semua. So kita carilah berdasarkan ini apakah yang paling tepat. Nampak bunyi macam semua betul kan? Tapi kalau if you notice in every clue, in every answer ada satu kesilapan. Okay, for example, dia kata A, to advise people with the virus to seek treatment. Dia kata menasihatkan orang yang dah ada virus. Sedangkan kat sini cakap hanya untuk mendapatkan vaksin. Okay, orang yang belum, orang yang berisiko tinggi belum, bukannya orang yang dah kena dah kena virus. So that's why now A is wrong. Okay, what about B? To explain how the vaccination prevents the spread of the virus. Ada tak cakap macam mana vaksin tu mencegah? Tak ada kan? Jadi A and B memang salah. C. To encourage high risk people. Ah, Kenapa yang kenapa jawapan dia C? Sebab inilah perkataan high risk ni. Kan saya, saya ada sebut tadi kan children dengan adults adalah high risk. So that's why The answer is C. Okay, D. Kenapa D salah? To inform the public that the virus is no longer considered a danger which is totally wrong. Sedangkan dia kata he doesn't mean we should let our gut down. Maksudnya D adalah salah. So that's why the best answer is C. So begitulah steps dia when you want to answer uh, section A, question 1 until question 8. You have to read the question first read the choice of answers, identify the keyword, identify the task, apa yang soalan tu nak. Lepas tu read the uh, graphic given or diagram given, uh, stimuli given, read and try to 
uh, understand Kadang-kadang there are words that you don't understand It's okay, you baca seluruhnya Baca as a whole and try to guess Advertisement ni cakap pasal apa Soalan ni sebenarnya cakap pasal apa Okay, insyaAllah usually Most of the time Mesti ada perkataan-perkataan yang you faham Okay, ada dua tiga perkataan yang you faham kan So that will help you to Uh, understand the question okay? My own students selalu cakap Teacher tak faham apa-apa Bila baca soalan ni tak faham apa-apa Nampak banyak je No okay? Now please try my my advice in here Number one read the question okay? Identify the keywords Tengok choices of answers Lepas ni mata you fokus kepada Apa yang you nak cari okay? Apa yang you nak tengok okay? InsyaAllah if you practice this way You, you can see improvements In your Uh, in your exam nanti Okay Okay now uh, Selain daripada yang tadi tu Advertisements, uh, diagrams so Semua tu ada juga Yang dalam bentuk ayat Short text Okay these texts are usually taken from Magazines, uh, newspaper Articles, reports And encyclopedias Ataupun ada juga daripada uh, Puisi-puisi Okay students may be asked for certain Detail okay Um, of meanings, uh, benefits, disadvantage and macam-macam soalan dia boleh tanya daripada short text tu. Okay. But always remember sometimes the headline will give you a clue about the text. Sebab tu um, jangan uh, lompat, jangan skip, bacalah semua apa yang ada dalam soalan. I have students yang memang mengaku, teacher, I don't like to read soalan yang panjang-panjang, soalan yang tulisan panjang banyak, banyak-banyak pening saya, teacher. Okay, I know, I know what you are trying to tell me. But nak tak nak, this is your future, kan? So take some time, uh, inhale a deep breath and bacalah uh, ayat tu one by one. Okay, read as a sentence. Okay, uh, kalau ada perkataan yang tak faham, tak apa. Gariskan perkataan tu langkah baca terus ayat seterusnya. Okay, bila dah habis baca satu paragraf tu, cuba agak. Okay, cuba agak daripada perkataan-perkataan yang you dah faham tadi. Soalan ni cakap tentang apa sebenarnya. Okay, insya Allah you will get the idea. Sebab dah baca soalan tadi kan, dah baca choice of answers tadi kan. So basically, dia, you akan tahu the so- soalan is about uh, apa soalan, uh, fokus soalan tu sebenarnya. Okay, yang penting jangan... Uh, jangan main tanda saja. Try. Okay, cuba. You are given two hours and 15 minutes for paper two. So you have so much time to read, take some time and answer your question. Okay, jangan dapat kertas terus tanda-tanda-tanda tidur. Tak mahu lah macam tu kan. Okay, so remember this is your future. At least give it a try. Okay. Okay, SPM 2017. Saya suka SPM 2017. Okay, uh, question number six. Ah, remember step tadi step one read the question. Okay, which title ah dia nak title. Okay, which title best summarizes the above text? Okay, saya tunjuk terus sebabnya kita ada banyak lagi benda kita nak bincang lepas ni. Okay, tapi kita masih kena analyze the question. Okay, which title? So dia nak tajuk best summarizes the above text ah. Ada ah uh, sometimes if you are given a short text yang tak ada Headline. Um, jadi dia tak ada clue. Tak ada clue langsung. So we have to read the question. Kita tahu dia nak tajuk. Tajuk yang menunjukkan uh, bila baca tajuk, uh, kita tahu apa yang ada dalam ni. Uh, itulah maksud soalan ni. Which title best summarizes, summarizes the above text? Dia kata tajuk yang manakah di bawah ni antara ni, antara uh, empat ni yang boleh memberi uh, penerangan ringkas ataupun idea keseluruhan tentang apa yang ada dalam Kotak ni. Okay. So which title summarizes the above text? Okay. A. Are the benefits of taking it up as a hobby? So dia kata seni, kita uh, kelebihan menjadikan dia satu hobby. Ah, So kita tengok nanti bila kita nak cari jawapan ada tak dia berkaitan dengan benefits? Okay. B. Kemahiran. Kalau tadi cakap pasal benefits, B ni dia kata skills. Ah, Kemahiran yang dikembangkan Uh, pada awal Pada tahun-tahun awal Okay and C Making it from what's available Okay making it Membuatnya daripada Apa yang ada What's available Maksudnya apa yang ada Okay so kita tengok Children love art So we are talking about children now Okay children love art 
whether they are painting, drawing, or cutting up things to glue together, it's their favorite thing to do. Okay, daripada baca tiga soal tiga adu tiga baris seni, insya Allah faham kan? Okay, we are talking about children and apa yang orang suka buat kan? Okay, instead of always giving them art paper, let them use whatever materials they have they already have around them, such as fabric scraps or even old newspapers. Dia kata, selalunya bila kita suruh anak-anak kita ataupun adik-adik kita ni uh, buat sesuatu, kita beli kertas warna, kita bagi pensel warna, kita bagi uh, gunting, kita bagi gum kan. Uh, kita Basically, kita yang bagi barang tu. So, now dia kata, why don't you try asking them to do something uh, tanpa memberi apa-apa. Maksudnya, dia kena cari, dia kena kreatif, dia kena guna apa yang ada di sekeliling mereka. Contohnya surat khabar, kotak, kotak kasut, kotak tisu kan. Ha, itulah maksud dia. Use whatever materials. Itu maksud dia. Okay. Uh, show them that art can be made from all things. Okay. Things will not only encourage creativity but it will also get them thinking about reusing things. Bigger children and can work with things like a discarded cabinet. Ha, dia kata kalau kanak-kanak yang lebih besar boleh menggunakan pintu uh, kabinet yang tercabut. Okay, uh, ceramik yang pecah, lantai yang pecah ataupun apa-apa yang berkaitan. Get them to redesign something that others deem as junk. Dia kata, jadi, uh, biarkan mereka mencipta sesuatu daripada sampah orang lain. Ha, itu maksudnya ayat dia ni. Okay, so bila kita baca ni, okay, what is the best thing to, uh, what is the best title to describe this? Adakah dia bercakap tentang benefits of taking it as a, as a hobby? Tak ada kan? Lepas tu skills, adakah bercakap pasal kemahiran? So yang paling tepat adalah making it from what's available. So nampak tak? Bila you can understand uh, the question, awak dah tahu mata tu nak tengok kat mana, fokus tu nak letak kat mana, you terus nampak jawapan. Okay, I hope you can understand my my tips here because it will be very helpful if you can practice this during SPM. Not even SPM yet. Dalam kelas nanti, your teachers akan bagi you a lot of uh, interventions uh, program, akan fokus pada skills, akan fokus pada tajuk-tajuk tertentu. So, try to apply. You can see uh, that you can un, uh, you can answer the questions as compared to before. Okay? Alright. Besides uh, advertisement, short text, we also have graphs and charts. Ah, so, alam ni memang nampak macam matematik sikit kan? Okay, so to, in order for you to answer this question, uh, you need to study the question. Study tu maksud you kena tengok betul-betul all the numbers, all the exist, x exist, y exist, kena tengok is it a bar graph, is it a pie chart, uh, all the numbers, uh, kena tengok betul-betul. So itu maksud dia study the question. Okay, and find out what is required. So once you dah you think at a glance, okay, you're going to answer a question on on graph or a chart. Okay, you read the question. Remember, always read the question first. Nak dapatkan idea, apa soalan ni nak. Okay, then you read the choice of answers. Tengok apa benda yang ada di dalam dalam uh, jawapan tu. What is it available there? Okay, what is it that you need to uh, compare after this? What is it that you have to link after this. Apa yang nak kena tengok? Keywords mana yang akan bantu you untuk dapat jawapan? Okay. Study the chart or graph by paying close attention to the title. Nampak? Title, subtitles and key which provide useful information. Okay. Key ni merujuk pada kan when you see a graph there'll be labels. Ah, So label-label tu lah kena tengok. Jangan skip. Alright. Okay, study or study. Study the data, the data carefully and recheck the question to focus on the particular aspect of data that you need to analyze such as percentage. So, ini dia akan bagi dalam untuk percentage kan. Okay, of certain items. Trend. Ah, ada yang nak suruh you tengok trend. Okay, ada soalan tanya, okay, how many percentage? Okay, uh, how many, what is the biggest percentage? What is the highest percentage? Ada juga yang tanya, uh, dia bagi macam bar graph ke, dia bagi atau line graph ke, dia tanya, fluctuate, ah, decreasing, increasing over a period of time or the rate. In analyzing the data, observe some commonly used words or phrases such as ah, perkataan kata ni famous sangat untuk soalan-soalan seperti ini. Okay, drastic increase, apa maksud dia? Uh, penambahan yang drastic, secara tiba-tiba kan, drastic tu maksudnya secara tiba-tiba, unexpected, 
Okey, lepas tu kita ada decrease, decrease maksudnya jatuh ataupun menjunam ataupun turun ataupun menurun. Okey, decline pun sama. Drop, jatuh, gradual rise. Gradual tu menunjukkan peningkatan yang sekata. Gradual tu maksudnya sekata. Kalau dia naik 2% bulan ni, bulan depan dia naik 2%. Bulan lagi satu pun 2%. So, itu maksudnya gradual rise. Okey. Lepas tu steady rise or decline, steady je macam tu je. Okay, uh, unsteady, slight, fluctuating, insignificant or significant increase or decrease or de So semua ni berkaitan dengan graphs and charts. Okay, so memang kena tahu apa maksud dia. Sebab tu saya kata kena familiarize yourself with these terms. Okay, uh, yang famous pun majority of ataupun minority of. Majority maksudnya yang paling banyak. Minority adalah yang paling sikit. Alright. Ha, so kita simplifykan dalam bentuk jadual supaya awak lebih, nampak lebih mudah. Okay. So percentage. Percentage lah. Kan. Ha, ni fluctuating. Saya, I'm very sure ada yang tanya saya tadi. Apa maksud fluctuating? Okay. Fluctuating. Sebutan dia fluctuating. Okay. Maksud dia ialah getting lower. Okay. Ataupun reduce. Ataupun changing continually. Okay, shift back and forth. Okay, ataupun very irregularly. Dia punya tu macam, macam semakin menurun, semakin menurun. Okay, so fluctuating, decreasing, declining, almost the same. Maksud dia merujuk pada apa-apa yang menurun ataupun apa-apa yang berkurang. Okay, increasing, rise, naik. Okay, getting higher, drastic, quickly. Ah, mesti saya cakap tadi, tiba-tiba, abruptly. Okay, significant. Significant maksudnya big difference ataupun major difference ataupun important. Okay, significant tu maksudnya penting ataupun dah sangat jelas, sangat nyata. Okay, insignificant. Okay, not a big difference, not important ataupun minor, slight. Okay, so basically nampak susah tadi kan perkataan-perkataan tu tapi bila kita tengok alamat semua ni kita dah biasa dengar. Okay, alright. Next, SPM 2017. Ah, so dia keluarkan soalan berbentuk pi chart. Okay, kalau bulat macam ni kita panggil pie chart kan? Okay, read the question. What can we conclude? Apa maksud conclude? Ha, siapa boleh jawab? What can we conclude from the above statistics about Summit Magazine? Ha. So, dia bagi dia bagilah dia tengok sini. Taken to read Summit Magazine. Okay, Summit Magazine ni ialah nama sebuah majalah. Okay, so dia bagilah. Nampak? 10% ni 60 minit, 16% ni less than 50 minit, uh, 45, okay, 9% baca, 45, okay. So, so this is the sample, this is the type of question yang akan keluar dalam SPM. Dia akan keluar secara balance kan. Um, kalau ikut analisis, almost every year, uh, soalan macam ni keluar. Ha, macam tu. Okay, sama macam grafnya adalah berbeza lah. Ada line graph, ada bar graph, ada pie chart. So, bergantung pada tahun. So at least kalau keluar tahun ni, you already know what to do. Okay, next. Ha, yang ni yang yang selalu macam my student cakap, teacher susah lah teacher. Ha, so because uh, proverbs ni kena selalu baca dan kena selalu tengok baru you boleh faham dan baru you boleh ingat. Okay, proverbs. Proverb tu maksudnya a short well-known statement that gives practical advice. Selalunya proverb ni macam peribahasa lah. Peribahasa. Okay. Uh, selalunya dia berbentuk nasihat. Okay. Uh, tentang hidup. Uh, contohnya macam ni lah. Such as a bird in the hand is worth two in the bushes. Okay. Kita tengok yang lain pula. Yang famous. Saya hanya senarikan yang famous saja. eh. Okay. A friend in need is a friend in need. Selalu dengar kan? Okay. A friend who helps you when you are in trouble is a real friend. Okay, all that glitters is not gold. Things that look attractive can be deceiving. Tak semua pun yang cantik tu, um, tak semua yang cantik tu, apa, uh, menarik kan. Kadang-kadang dia boleh menipu kita. Ha, all work all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Apa maksud dia? Kalau kita direct translation, semua kerja dan tak ada main membuatkan Jack seorang yang bosan. Adakah itu maksud dia? Okay, your life will become stagnant If all you do is work. Ha, betul lah. Maksudnya, kalau kita tak ada tak ada masa untuk uh, diri kita, tak ada masa untuk socialize, tak ada masa untuk berkawan, memanglah kita akan jadi seorang yang tidak berkembang. Statement ni maksudnya uh, duduklah kat situ, tak berkembang-kembang. Duduk je kat situ. Ha, macam tu. Okay. 
a rolling stone gathers no moss. A person is unable to succeed in life if he or she often changes job. Okay. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Kalau, kalau kita tengok batu tu berguling kan, ada tak dia dapat lekat apa-apa sebab dia laju. Tak ada kan? So, sama juga kat sini. A person is unable to succeed in life. Seseorang tu takkan berjaya dalam hidup kalau dia, ah shit, tukar kerja. Kerja dua tahun dengan syarikat ni, bosan, uh, ada masalah di sini, tukar kerja. Uh. So, lama kelamaan, dia, setiap kali dia pergi ke company baru, dia akan mula balik daripada bawah. So, lambatlah naik pangkat. Itu maksud dia. So, bolehlah um, familiarize yourself. My keyword today is the word familiarize. Okay? Familiarize yourself with these proverbs. Okay? Kadang-kadang you jumpa dalam buku, kadang-kadang you jumpa dekat posters, kadang-kadang you jumpa dekat dalam TV, dalam advertisement. So, pay attention to what what is happening around you. Okay? Ah, so, dah habis question 1 until 8. Now, we are uh, entering the second part of section A which is rational clothes. Okay, rational clothes. Okay, rational clothes ni, uh, uh, question 9 until 15 ni memang tak ada soalan lain kecuali soalan berkaitan dengan grammar vocab. Dua ni. Ah, so, yang ni memang kena study. Yang ni memang kena practice. Yang ni memang kena rujuk cikgu. Okay, so famous, memang garanti soalan yang keluar adalah parts of speech. Okay, ada soalan yang nak test you punya understanding, uh, test your knowledge on tenses. You tahu bezakan tak present tense dengan past tense, verb untuk present tense, verb untuk past tense. Ada soalan macam tu. Okay, ada juga soalan yang check you punya understanding of articles. Articles kat sini bukannya keratan akhbar, tapi articles dalam grammar ni adalah merujuk kepada a and Dengan the, adakah you know how to use these articles? Uh, ataupun nouns, kata nama, quantifiers, pronouns. Ada banyak undang-undang grammar, uh, parts of speech. Uh, so, memang kena study. Okay, memang kena banyak buat latihan. Sebab it, this is the core of English. Okay, uh, selain the grammar, for this part also, question 9 until 15, uh, there will be questions on vocabulary. Memang akan ada soalan on vocabulary. Nak menguji sama ada you know daripada empat choices of words yang dia bagi tu you tahu tak yang mana paling tepat untuk memenuhi kehendak soalan. Okay. So selalunya yang famous sangat uh, soalan vocab ni ialah yang berkaitan dengan sensory words. Okay. Apa yang awak nampak, apa yang awak dengar, apa yang awak pegang. Uh, lepas tu ada juga soalan adjectives. Okay. Kata sifat. Dan ada juga uh, soalan on adverbs. Okay. So basically dua ni memang kena master kalau nak dapat nine tu. Uh, 9 to 15 tu dapat markah penuh. Okay. Selalunya it comes with practice. Bila awak dah selalu buat latihan, you will understand the uh, the, the rules. You will be able to answer this question. Okay. And um, cara paling mudah nak dapat markah dekat sini ialah bila kita membaca sebarang ayat tu, we need to ingat dua perkara. Okay. Ingat dua perkara. Kalau soalan tu tentang cancer lah. Okay. Number one, okay. You, when you read the first three lines tu, Adakah dia in present tense ataupun adakah dia in past tense? Okay. Macam mana nak tahu is it in past tense or is it in present tense? Okay. Cuba cari verb dalam ayat-ayat tersebut. Okay. The first three sentences tu cari verbs. Okay. Verbs tu apa? Verbs tu kata kerja. Okay. Kata kerja pula ada dua jenis. Okay. Motion verb ataupun helping verb. Okay. Motion verb adalah yang bergerak. Okay. Cuba tengok dalam ayat tu ada tak uh, any motion verb? Ada tak? Uh, perkataan walk ke, ada tak perkataan eat ke, ada tak perkataan write ke. Uh, itu adalah motion verb. Helping verb pula ialah yang is a was were tu. Itu adalah helping verb. Ah, uh, Jadi t- cuba tengok. Dalam ayat tiga ayat yang pertama tu, ada tak verb yang past tense ke present tense? Kalau walk tu dia ada s ke dia ada ed? Uh, kalau dia singular ke dia plural? So inilah yang akan membantu awak untuk memilih jawapan yang betul. Most of the time, Okay, most of the time, if the first three sentences are in past tense, most probably the rest of the passage will be in past tense. Kecuali kalau dia memang tengok, uh, cakap dekat situ, uh, recently ataupun now, uh, baru kita tukar pada present tense. But kalau the first three uh, sentences were in past tense, most of the time, the whole passage will be in past tense. Okay, so carilah verb. Okay. Itu memang kena tahu. Sekurang-kurangnya ambillah tahu uh, penggunaan verbs, okay, motion verbs and helping verbs and ambillah juga tahu how to identify si, uh, present tense and 
past tense yang paling paling minimum at least kena tahu perkara ni okey present uh, tenses subject verb agreement dan juga um, tenses lah tadi okey uh, singular plural tu SPA lah subject verb agreement tu ialah singular plural okey you tahu ni at least you boleh bila menjawab tu tanya diri okey ini present tense ke past tense ini singular plural ask yourself okey ask yourself okey before you start choosing your answer start uh, jangan main belas saja uh, tell yourself this is my future markah ni menentukan masa depan you so try as much as you can okay, i'm very sure kalau you berhati-hati macam tu you will get the correct answer okay alright apa lagi yang boleh kita buat nak dapat ber, nak dapat markah penuh untuk rational clause supaya kita dapat banyak soalan yang betul okay number one you mesti baca okay you get the general idea of the whole text Okay, ha, macam saya cakap tadi, kena identify dia guna tense apa. Present tense ke? Past tense. Read the first three lines. Itulah clue dia. Okay, the first three lines. Tengok dia guna present tense ke? Past tense. Okay. Memang kena apply grammar knowledge. Memang kena tak kena apply grammar grammar yang you belajar selama ni. Lepas tu, uh, kalau tak sure, kalau memang ada doubt, okay, baca choice of answers tu, cancel dulu yang mana yang memang you guarantee salah. Okay, that will help you to find the correct answers. Okay. Uh, okay, look at this passage. Question 9 to 15. Okay, tengok arahan dia. Choose the best. Dia nak yang terbaik. Okay, choose the best answer to fill in each blank. Okay, life is not easy when you are terrified of electricity. Uh, okay, bila kita baca ayat pertama ni, ada tak verb? Motion verb ke ataupun helping verb? So kita nampak perkataan is. Okay, kita baca the next line pula. Sebab kita nak confirm, kita nak make sure betul ke tenses yang kita faham ni. Okay, so is ini adalah signal kepada present tense. Okay, life is not easy when you are terrified of electricity. As one woman called Donna knows. Ha, Donna. Donna ni seorang perempuan. Seorang. Okay, single. Singular. So, no ni adalah verb dan dia letak S. So, bila seorang singular, okay, verb dia ada S, ini adalah the second clue telling you that this is present tense. Kalau tadi is present tense, sekarang kita ada second clue. Donna knows, uh, Donna knows tu singular, verb dia kena ada S. Okay, itu menunjukkan present tense. Okay, yang ni tadi saya tak sebut sebabnya dia sama group dengan is helping verb. So, satu helping verb. Satu uh, verb biasa. Okay. If she gets. ah uh, Kita jumpa lagi satu. If she gets. So definitely uh, paragraph ni insyaAllah satu passage ni jawapan kita mestilah. InsyaAllah jawapan kita adalah dalam bentuk uh, present tense. Uh, okay so now macam mana nak cari jawapan? Okay. Uh, Life is not easy when you are terrified of electricity as one woman called Donna knows all too well. If she gets, dia bagi blank. Tapi kita tahu she gets blank. A light switch or a thunderstorm. The 43-year-old writer becomes so terrified that she can think of nothing but flee. Bila kita baca ayat ni, kita tak tahu lagi kita tempat kosong kan? If she gets, kalau dia terkena, a light, uh, a light switch. Terkena ke? If she gets, uh, dapat. A light switch. Okay? Ataupun thunderstorm. Dia akan, dia berumur 43 tahun Dia akan jadi sangat takut Terrified ni maksudnya sangat takut Okay, that she can think of Nothing but fleeing Okay, dia tak boleh nak fikir apa dah Pada masa tu ah, Okay, so selalunya dia akan bagi uh, Choices of answers, ah, contohnya this one Okay Yang dia bagi Towards, past, near With ah, If she gets, kita tahu kena Present tense, so kat mana kat sini Uh, kat sini yang uh, tak ada kaitan langsung dengan present tense uh, If she gets past, if she gets towards, if she gets near, if she gets with Yang mana satu paling tepat, paling tepat Okay, so if she gets near a light switch So yang paling tepat adalah perkataan near Okay, so number 10 okay. The Okay, saya kena laju sikit eh, sebab ni baru section A Kita ada banyak lagi section lain kan Okay, number 10 The For Donna's extreme condition is electrophobia. Apa maksud electrophobia? Okay, phobia ialah ketakutan kan? Electro ialah electric. Jadi dia sangat takut kepada electric. 
Okay. The poso for Donna's extreme condition is electrophobia. So, dia kata nama penyakit Donna ni adalah electrophobia or the morbid fear of electricity. Ah, tengok kita dah belajar ilmu baru hari ni. Okay. So, apakah yang paling sesuai dekat sini? Okay. Dia memberi penerangan tentang penyakit Donna. Nama penyakit Donna. Adakah dia sebuah idea? Adakah dia satu terma? Adakah dia satu mark? Ataupun adakah dia satu konsep? So, apa? Penyakit ni sebenarnya apa? Okay. So yang paling tepat adalah term. Terma. Okay. Nama penyakit dia adalah elektrofobia. So itu caranya kita nak cari yang paling tepat. Okay. One more. Okay. Question 11. The list of phobias. Ha. List ni ada satu. Sebab tu dia ada is kat sini. Walaupun sini ada s kan. Is ni bukan merujuk pada phobias ni. Tapi dia merujuk pada list ni. So hanya satu list. Okay, the list of phobias is growing every day and is now apa? online at www.phobialist.com. Okay, dia kata uh, list untuk jenis-jenis uh, ketakutan ni semakin uh, semakin uh, banyak. Okay, growing every day. Semakin banyak setiap hari. Dan sekarang and is now uh, and dan sekarang dah dah ada dekat online pun. Haa. Uh. Where, where more than 500 human fears are listed alphabetically. Maksudnya dalam website tu awak akan jumpa if you go now, you can see that there is more than 500 fears. Jenis-jenis ketakutan. Ada lebih daripada 500 jenis-jenis ketakutan manusia yang disusun mengikut uh, daripada huruf A ke Z. Itu maksud alphabetically. Okay, so apakah jawapan yang paling sesuai? Okay, the list of phobias is growing every day and is now fine online. Is that the correct word? Is now fine online. Bunyi pun pelik kan? So, A is definitely wrong. Okay, we'll try the next one. Okay, is now fines online. Adakah fines online? Kenapa tak boleh fines online? Sebabnya benda ni memang dah ada. Okay, phobia list ni memang dah, dah ada di dalam uh, dah ada di dalam uh, website tu. So, fine dengan fines salah. So, bolehkah kita guna finding? Finding kalau nak guna dia, kena ada uh, verb kat depan ni kan. Tapi dia verb ni datang sebelum perkataan ni. Jadi yang paling mudah, yang paling tepat is now found online. Sudah dijumpai. Okay, merujuk, merujuk pada benda ni memang dah ada. So yang paling tepat dekat sini is found. Telah dijumpai. Okay, so jawapan dia adalah C. Ha, so begitulah caranya. Uh, you can find answers for closed passage question, for rational closed questions. Okay, uh, I hope so far um, for section A, at least you get some ideas uh, in choosing the best answers. But jawapan dah ada depan mata, it's your uh, part to at least try to find the best answers based on the clues that I have shared just now. Okay, so now we are going to uh, enter, we are going to do the next section which is also supposed to be uh, easy okay, which, which is also supposed to be uh, easy for you to score because you are only needed to uh, transfer the information, even the title even the, the title of the section itself the name of the section itself is information transfer okay, all you need to do is to transfer the information Okay, so for this section, uh, it is uh, allocated as 10 marks. Okay, question 16, questions 16 to 25. Okay, there are a few things that you need to remember when you want to answer this section. Okay, number one, mandatory. Okay, mandatory spelling. Okay, spelling is mandatory. Maksudnya spelling tu mesti betul. Sebabnya the text is there. Awak diberi satu teks. You are given teks. You are given a passage. Tak kira lah passage tu dalam bentuk apa. Sebab dalam dalam uh, section B ni juga passage tu boleh jadi uh, dalam pelbagai bentuk kan. Dia boleh jadi iklan. Dia boleh jadi poster. Dia boleh jadi cerita, narrative. Dia boleh jadi long passage. Dia boleh jadi comparison. So dia boleh jadi apa sahaja. Tapi it is given to you. So, bila dia diberi kepada kamu, it is given to you, the text is there, the spelling of words are there. So, that's why you tak boleh salah bila menjawab. 
because you are because the spelling is there your job is to just take the spelling spell it back correctly so that's why spelling is mandatory okay okay number two you need to remember to write your proper nouns correctly okay you need to know by now how to write proper noun correctly proper nouns means kata nama khas okay kat mana yang perlu dia tulis huruf besar mesti dia tulis huruf besar contohnya nama khas nama sekolah okay nama sekolah saya ni SMK setapak indah so SMK sekolah menengah kebangsaan S huruf besar M huruf besar K huruf besar setapak indah S huruf besar dan I huruf besar itulah cara menulis kata nama khas dengan betul that's how you write a proper noun correctly okay uh, apa lagi dia kata nama khas yang ada okay we have a nama tempat okay Pahang negeri Pahang we have Malaysia we have um, we have United Kingdom so Semua tu memerlukan you menulis dengan betul Because it's a proper noun Okay, apa lagi contoh proper noun yang lain? Uh, nama jalan Okay uh, Chow Kid Road C huruf besar K huruf besar R huruf besar Because dia nama jalan Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman Jalan J huruf besar T huruf besar A huruf besar R huruf besar Okay, selalunya kita akan tulis huruf besar For the first letter of the word Kalau untuk nama, nama khas lah Okay uh, ada tahun um, lembaga peperiksaan membenarkan untuk proper noun ni ditulis dengan semua huruf besar tetapi kalau nama khas ni ditulis dengan semua huruf kecil dia akan jadi salah ok kalau you notice itu tahun 2017 ada soalan satu soalan tentang uh, nama kedai ok nama kedai so mer perlu menulis dengan betul kalau ditulis dengan semua huruf besar diterima tapi kalau ditulis dengan semua huruf kecil menjadi satu kesalahan so whatever it is just remember proper noun needs to be written correctly okay first letter of each word should be written in capital letter okay so number one spelling number two proper noun okay number three okay nama pun information transfer so you will only transfer the information you will only transfer what is us okay the, uh, trying uh, so far as i'm concerned tidak ada pun bahagian information transfer ni yang memerlukan okay, that need you to write long sentences okay sebaliknya they want you to answer uh, what is needed they if they even give you the word limit uh, so you must know which part to take okay which relevant part to take to answer the question okay take only necessary words okay leave out the examples selalunya soalannya adalah begitu Okay, so I, think, I hope SPM 2020 pun masih mengamalkan uh, konteks yang sama. Okay, alright. Number four, your answers must fit in the given sentence starter. Okay, if you notice, uh, there are many types of uh, questions uh, style for this uh, section. Okay, you it can be graphic organizer, it can be a blog, it can be uh, it can be a paragraph, it can be anything, right? But let's say, let's say you are given uh, a blog. So it is in a form of a paragraph, right? So the answer that you are giving should fit the sentence, should fit the sentence after that, the sentence, okay? So, uh, sometimes um, even the sentence starter pun kena sesuai dengan apa yang you nak jawab. So your answers must fit in with the given sentence starter okay so number five okay the latest patterns at 2016 17 18 19 okay they give you word limit so please follow the instructions okay please always read the instruction highlight the keywords highlight the word limit okay because you they will definitely mark you wrong if you get if you exceed the word limit okay Number six, be careful with the tenses and subject verb agreement. Here also, they practice this. So if the question is given uh, in past tense, so make sure you answer also in past tense. If the question is given in present tense and require you, uh, it, it requires you to answer in present tense, you must answer in present tense. If the question gives you, uh, requires a, a singular answer, you must give the answer in singular form. So please be careful with this, okay? 
And finally, in order for you to, in order to help you to find the answers, look at for the ideas, look at for the synonyms. Um, now I think synonyms will be very helpful. Okay, antonyms kata uh, ideas, synonyms tu kata sama maksud, antonyms kata berlawanan ataupun common words. Again, common words, perkataan-perkataan yang biasa digunakan. Okay, so insyaAllah if you can apply these seven steps, you will score this section. Okay, alright. Now, look at this sample. Ibrahim is going, okay, this is also SPM 2017-18. Okay, Ibrahim is going on a camping trip. So, talking about Ibrahim, right? Using words, so the instruction is clear. So, that's why you need to read the instructions and underline the keywords. What is it that you are supposed to be, to be careful with? What is it that you're supposed to look at? Okay, so here, the word using words from the leaflet, meaning your answer must only be taken from the leaflet. You cannot give your own answer. Ah, so that's why please, instruction, 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 read the instruction. Okay, using words from the leaflet given, complete his block entry below. So this is a block. Use only one word. Again, underline this instruction. Okay? Only one word, meaning you cannot write more than one word. So each blank here will only have one answer. And the answer must only be taken from the leaflet given. Okay? So this is another skill that you need to master. You need to have the skill to read the instruction. You must train yourself to read the instruction and underline what you are supposed to do. Okay, next. So, uh, the first part they give you in a form of a block and the second part uh, is in a form of labeling here, right? Diagram, okay. Uh, using words from components of a shoe, label the parts below. Okay, one of the parts has been labeled. Use no more than two words. Meaning you cannot write more than two words. Must be one and two only. Okay, so you must find the answers from the leaflet. Right? Okay, section C. Reading comprehension. Okay, please pay attention as in paper two, section C has the most marks. Okay, 25 out of 70 marks. Okay, all right. Reading comprehension, okay. Number one, please remember, do not copy exactly the whole sentence from the paragraph in the text, okay. You need to know the parts that is, the relevant part that is needed, okay. The, rel the relevant part that is answering the question. If you uh, accidentally uh, give more than what is asked, you give more than the relevant parts, your answer will be considered as wrong. So that's why you need to know what is being asked in the question. Okay? And I always tell my students to write their answers in phrases, words, or short answers, depending on the question. That's why please read the question. Okay? So from the question, you will know whether to answer in phrases, whether to give long answers or short answers, or even to give the answer in one word, okay? The next one that you need to remember is you don't have to repeat the questions in your answer, okay? Sometimes um, there are students who like to repeat the questions in their answers. No, you don't have to do that. If the question is asking, who is the person in the car? So you don't have to repeat the person in the car is Ali. No, you just give us Ali. That's it. Okay? This is my advice. Do not waste time on uh, copying the questions again. All right? Just give what is needed, what is asked. Okay? Next one, number four. Please be careful with the pronouns. Okay? Lately, um, the latest patterns, uh, most of the passages for section C are were in a form of narrative, were in a form of stories. Okay, so most most prob uh, most of the uh, the characters in the story were mentioning the word I. 
my. Okay, so, but when you want to answer comprehension question, you cannot put the word I. Okay, you cannot put the word I. You cannot put the word my, me, mine, we, us, our, ours. Okay, again, depending on the question. Okay, usually, most of the time, uh, you have to change the pronoun. Okay, if you know the writer, uh, the writer's name, then you write the writer's name. Ali is the person. Ali is uh, something. Okay, if you know it's a male, then you can write he. Uh, uh, he is the one who stands beside Ahmad. Uh, so something like that. Okay, just be careful with this. Okay, if the again depending on the questions, but most of the time, uh, you don't need to use this pronoun. Okay. Me, my, mine, I, we, us, our. You don't need that in your comprehension. Okay? You need to change. You need to change the pronouns. Okay. Uh, if you notice question number 29, sometimes in even question 28, uh, and definitely question 30, I require you to give reasons or uh, to give ideas. Ah, okay. So this is what we call as hot questions, higher order thinking skills questions. How do you know it's a hot question? When you see the word, when you see the keyword uh, why in your question. Why means your answer must be a reason, right? So when you have to give a reason, you have to think first before you give the answer. So that's why hot question requires you to think. So when you want to give your answer, your answer should be logical and should be related to the question. It cannot be everything under the roof, okay? It should answer the question, should be related to the question and should be logical too. And please, this is where we know whether you are giving us uh, a, much, a mature answer or not, okay? So please, Give some time, think before you start answering hot questions. Okay, okay. Um, clues. Okay, most of the time, okay, there are actually many, many um types of uh, hot question, right? But uh, from the analysis, again, I love to do the, I love to do analysis. Can, okay. Um, favorite questions for hots usually were about uh, methods. Okay, methods on doing something, suggestions on something, or characteristics of a person. Okay, usually if the question is about a characteristic of a person, the answer will usually be in a form of adjective. Okay, if the question is uh, asking for your reactions, usually the answers will be in a form of verbs. Okay, like uh, 2017, right? Uh, what was the reaction of of uh, Johnny's friends, okay, shock. He was shocked. So that's a reaction. So shock itself is a verb, okay. And sometimes uh, the question is asking you to uh, give away. If you are given this situation, what will you do? So that that could be also okay. That that is that is among the favorite ones lah for hot question. Question number twenty eight, twenty nine, or even thirty. Thirty is a must. Sometimes they start with twenty eight. Okay, all right. Summary. Okay, uh, I've actually I'm supposed to put this uh, as the first slide, but I definitely uh, but I purposely put it here so I want you to pay attention. Okay, usually before you want to read the passage itself, ah, why do you try to read the summary question first? Okay, because if you um, read question number thirty one, which is a summary question, uh. They will, you will get the idea. You will get the general idea what the passage is all about. So you are actually uh, preparing your mind to be ready that after this, you are going to read about this. Ah, because summary question is actually uh, the general idea of the whole passage. So try that after this, okay? Read the summary question first, then only you read the passage. Okay, so you will know, you will focus more because you know that you're going to read about this. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, let's say, let's say when you read the passage, you are stuck. 
Okay, you are stuck. Okay, you go back to the summary question. Okay, All right. Again, after you read the summary question, I always advise my students to read the questions, other questions, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Because from the questions, again, okay, again, uh, it will help you to understand the passage better because you know, oh, this is about this character. Oh, this is about this. So from the questions, you will get general idea of the whole passage. Although you, although it's, there are words that you don't understand in the passage, but because you understand the context already, you will be able to understand the whole thing clearer. Okay, so try to apply this method. Read the summary question first. Read the question first. Then only you read the whole passage. Okay. Okay. Uh, frequent uh, questions for reading comprehension. Frequent ways. Frequent uh, phrases. Okay. That you will often see in reading comprehension. Okay. Uh, they are asking you whether to explain the writer's view or opinions on certain issue. Okay. Or they want you to explain the meaning of words. Uh, this one, I think so far, is a must, right? There are years... Uh, asking questions uh, on uh, for you to give only one word answer or there are years uh, require you to give answers in phrases so please read the question if the question wants in once uh, a word means your answer must be in one word only okay uh, also sometimes uh, the question is asking you to come up with a conclusion okay you have this information what do you think what do you think uh, they want you to draw conclusions or even uh, they want you to give your personal response to an issue. Okay, uh, So these are the things that are frequently asked in reading comprehension. Okay. All right. So this is SPM 2018 question. Okay. I know you don't have the whole text, but if you uh, read this uh, paragraph, you will be able to answer the question. Okay. So now, read, remember the, to read the question first, right? Okay. Number 26. Which one word? So it is obviously telling you you need to give the answer in one word only. Okay. So which one word in paragraph 2? So here we have paragraph 1 and we have paragraph 2. Okay. In paragraph 2, tells us that Sarah's father. So we are talking about Sarah. Okay. Was one of the earliest surfers in Malaysia. So we need to find one word that describes Sarah father, Sarah's father. Okay, the idea is the word earliest. Earliest means yang paling awal. So now let's look at paragraph two. Sarah had an early induction introduction to surfing. So this is not talking about Sarah's father. She grew up watching her father, a pioneer of the Malaysian surf scene, some fifteen years ago. So. Uh, is there any clue in this sentence? She grew up watching her father. So she watched her father. A pioneer of the Malaysian surf scene. So a pioneer. What does it mean by a pioneer? Kumpulan terawal. Kumpulan pertama. So that's why the answer is pioneer. So this is the answer. Okay, so this is the answer for this question. Okay, remember, the question is asking one word. Okay, so okay. look at number one. A pioneer. Will this be accepted in SPM? It is answering, right? The question, a pioneer. Okay, this is the answer for uh, for the question. But the candidate here did not follow the instruction. The question is asking for one word. But this is two words. A here is also considered as one word. So that's why number one is not accepted. Number one is wrong. Okay, now look at number two. Again, same concept. The question is asking one word, although the idea is the same, okay? But the instruction clearly said they only want one word answer. So, er uh is wrong, the is wrong, okay? So, number one and number two, not acceptable. Okay, what about number three? So, this is four words, okay? The answer is pioneer, okay? Although this is four words answer, but the student cleverly put the inverted comma. So the Lembaga Peperiksaan accepted this answer because of the inverted comma here. Okay, so 
So that's why you have to be careful. So this student is lucky because she or he put the inverted comma. So only this is considered as the answer. Okay. But my advice is just write what is asked. Pioneer. Number one. Number four. Okay. One word. The question is asking for one word. Just give one word. Do not trouble yourself to write the sentence. Okay. So the correct answer here is the is number four. Pioneer. Okay. Remember one word. Just give one word. All right. Next. Okay. From paragraph three, which okay, just now one word. Now two word phrase. So you know the phrase only has two words. Ah, two word phrase. Okay tells us that Sarah was born with a natural ability. Talking about ability for surfing. Okay, so now your job is to find the two-word phrase. Okay, let's see. Sarah shares her father's passion for the sport. I really enjoy squash and swimming, but for me, there's nothing in the world like surfing. She says surfing has always been a key aspect of Sarah's life. When her father realized she had an inherent talent, she began accompanying him regularly on his surf trips. So surfing was never anything unusual to me, she says, now an undergraduate at 15 University Malaya. For a few years, I even had intensive coaching from my dad. Okay, so now remember your job is to find a two-word phrase the meaning is related to natural ability. Okay, so like here, the choice of answers given, okay, the answers were given by the candidate, SPM candidate that year. The candidate gave, began accompanying. So this is, is this an ability? No, right? So this is not an ability. So number one is wrong. Remember, we need to find two word phrase that has this, uh, that, that, <clears throat> has the same, uh, they're talking about ability, okay? So, began a company is not an ability, okay? What about number two? This is an action, right? Number one is an action. Okay, number two, surf trips. Surf trips, trips, you pergi somewhere. Is that a, an ability? Is that an, a, a natural ability? No. So, number two is wrong. Three, anything unusual. So, this is not related to natural ability right so the answer accepted is inherent talent bakat yang diwarisi maksudnya bakat tu dah semula jadilah okay sama lah maksudnya dengan natural ability so that's why the answer for this question is inherent talent okay so sometimes you boleh tahu the answers by looking at the sentences Kalau pelik lah bunyi dia tu lain daripada yang lain tu selalunya itulah jawapan dia. But oh, 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 but that's not most of the time. Okay, I'm just sharing. Okay, kalau terkena rezeki lah kan. But cannot practice that. You must analyze the question. Okay, jangan nanti lepas ni kau tahu teacher sudah kata yang pelik tu itulah jawapan dia. No, 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 no. Tak semestinya. Okay, you need to analyze the question. Alright. Okay, number 27B, from paragraph 4, okay, what is what is it about larger waves that attracts the surfers? Ah, okay, so the keyword here is what? Okay, so Alan ditanya, daripada paragraph 4 ni, apa dia? Okay, what is it about larger? Apa dia tentang uh, ombak yang besar ni yang membuatkan surfers ni tertarik? Kenapa surfers suka dengan ombak besar? What do you think? Okay, so kita tengok. Sarah belongs to a growing circle of female surfers who are fearless. They are not intimidated by the waves that sometimes tower over them. Okay, apa maksud dia ni? Apa maksud ayat ni? Sarah sebenarnya adalah ahli uh, <coughs> growing circle of female surfers ni maksudnya dia uh, adalah ahli kumpulan uh, female surfers, surfers perempuan uh, yang memang tak takut. Fearless tu maksudnya tak takut. Okay. Uh, they, are, they are not intimidated by the waves. Mereka tak takut dengan uh, ombak yang sometimes tower over, tower over maksudnya melebihi ketinggian mereka. In fact, sebaliknya, the more towering the waves, lagi tinggi ombak tu, lagi best. Ha, itu maksudnya. Okay. 
it is the intense feeling they give uh, that the surface say. Okay. It is the intense feeling. Okay. Perasaan yang yang pressure tu, perasaan yang rasa takut tu lah yang membuatkan mereka terus mencari. Okay. Itulah yang dicari oleh semua surfers. Okay. Surfing is not the easiest of sport. Okay. Surfing ni, meluncur ni bukanlah satu sukan yang mudah. Okay. The waves pounding, okay, 20 against you can be, the waves pounding against you can be painful. Dia kata bila ombak tu memukul, sangat sakit sebenarnya. Okay, and that is by no means the end of it. Okay, uh, the blazing sun can also burn your skin. Okay, blazing sun ni maksudnya cahaya matahari yang sangat terik, sangat panas pun boleh membakar kulit. Okay. Mereka ada masalah ni tapi mereka masih suka pergi surfing. Okay, now, question tadi kata apa? What is it about the larger wave that attracts? Okay, kenapa dengan ombak besar tu? So, kat mana dalam paragraf ni yang bercakap tentang waves? Okay, line 1 tak ada. Um, line 2 ada tapi adakah dia menceritakan apa-apa yang menarik? Tak ada kan? Dia cuma cakap wave tu sometimes melebihi ketinggian mereka. In fact, ha, the more towering the waves, the better. Ha, sekarang dia cakap pasal wave. Dia kata lagi tinggi, lagi bagus. Kenapa lagi tinggi, lagi bagus? So the answer comes after this. It is the intense feeling they give. So di sini merujuk pada ombak, bukan yang pada surfers. So the answer will be the intense feeling that the surfers see. So nombor satu betul. Okay, what about number two? Surfing is not the easiest of sports. Adakah nombor tu ni menjawab soalan larger waves ni? Tak ada kan? So that's why number two is wrong. And number three, the intense feeling the waves gives. Adakah idea dia sama dengan nombor satu? The intense feeling, perasaan yang diberi oleh ombak tu, adakah ini menjawab soalan? Yes. So the correct answer here is number one and number three. Okay. So far so good. Are you with me? Now, can you get all the tips, all the techniques to answer comprehension questions? Senang di sebenarnya kan? If you know the techniques. Okay? Tak semestinya tak tahu uh, perkataan, tak, tak tak faham maksud perkataan, you tak boleh jawab dengan betul. Okay? Ada cara untuk mencari jawapan. Okay. Kita try a few more then okay, kita akan proceed dengan summary. Okay? Alright. Paragraph 5. From paragraph 5, what made Sarah's mother change her mind about her daughter's involvement in surfing? Uh, soalan dah start panjang dah ni. Nampak tak? Perasan tak soalan dia dah, dah semakin, uh, dia punya tahap kesukaran tu semakin bertambah. So, uh, level of question tu dia daripada, daripada senang, dia akan jadi lebih susah, lebih susah, lebih susah. Okay. From paragraph 5, what made, again, identify the keyword. Okay. Keyword dia dekat sini, dia kata, what made Sarah's mother? Dia kata, apakah yang membuat mak Sarah change her mind, menukar fikiran? Yang tukar fikiran ni siapa? Sarah ke mak dia? Sarah ke mak dia, saya tanya. What made Sarah's mother change her mind? Mak Sarah yang menukar fikiran. Okay, bukan Sarah. What made Sarah's mother change her mind about her daughter's involvement in surfing? Apakah yang membuatkan mak Sarah ni berubah fikiran tentang penglibatan anak dia dengan surfing? Masa mula-mula kalau you baca the whole text, okay, the whole text mak dia tak suka. Tak suka dia surfing sebab dia kata bila Sarah balik, Sarah sakit. Kulit Sarah terbakar. Okay, so muka Sarah merah-merah. So dia tak suka. Tapi ada sesuatu yang berlaku membuatkan dia merubah, berubah fikiran. So itulah yang kita kena cari dalam paragraf ni. Apa yang berlaku yang membuatkan mak Sarah ni berubah fikiran. Okay, so you have to familiarize yourself with this word change, uh, involvement. Sebab perkataan ni selalu keluar dalam soalan SPM. Okay, alright. Now, our job is to find apa? Apa perkara yang membuatkan mak dia berubah fikiran? So, let's find the answer. Okay, one day I came back from the beach bright red because I forgotten to use my sunblock. Sarah, say Sarah with a laugh. Sarah kata satu hari dia balik dia, uh, dia balik rumah Rumah, uh, muka dia dalam keadaan yang sangat merah. Sebab apa? Sebab dia lupa nak pakai sunblock. My mom was horrified. Mak saya sangat takut and wanted me to stop surfing dan nak saya berhenti meluncur. There was no way I was going to agree to that. Tak mungkin saya akan setuju dengan 
perkara itu. I tried to convince her how much I love serving. Uh, saya cuba meyakinkan. Convince ni maksudnya meyakinkan. I tried to convince her how much I love serving. But it didn't make any difference. Tapi mak saya tak nak dengar. Okay. It was only after. So, hanya selepas. So, perkataan hanya ni wajib lah. Penting lah. Okay. It was only. Ha, hanya selepas saya memenangi beberapa pertandingan. Akhirnya dia mengalah. Itulah maksud ayat terakhir ini. It was only after I won a couple of competitions that she gave in. Sebab yang bercakap ni Sarah. So dia bolehlah kata I. Okay. So it was only after um, it was only after I won. Dia kata selepas saya menang beberapa pertandingan akhirnya dia mengalah. Akhirnya mak dia berubah fikiran. So inilah jawapan dia. Okay now dari bahagian dari mana sampai ke mana yang kita nak ambil jawapan dia. Okay, after I won a couple of competitions. Ha, betul ke tak betul? Kalau tengok sini betul kan? After I won a couple of competitions. Tapi kenapa jawapan ni not acceptable? Ingat tak tadi reminder yang saya beritahu awal-awal tadi? Okay, because in comprehension question, you cannot use the word I. Okay, because I sini, if kalau awak yang menjawab, if you are writing the answer as if awak lah yang, yang menjadi, Sarah. So that's why you need to change the pronounced. Kalau jawab I, memang tidak diterima. Unacceptable. Okay, now number two. After she won a couple of competitions, she gave in. Okay, ni dah betul dah ni. Dah tukar kan? Dah tukar dah pronoun. Tapi kenapa jawapan ni salah? Kenapa number two is not acceptable? Because we don't know, okay, because we don't know With she is Sarah, with she is Mak dia. So sebab ayat ni nampak macam satu ayat yang sama saja walaupun awak dah tukar. So maksudnya bila nak tukar pun kena hati-hati. Okay, alright. Number three. Okay, remember number one, not acceptable. Number two, not acceptable too. What about number three? Okay, number three. She love surfing so much. Adakah kerana dia love surfing so much, mak dia berubah fikiran? Ha, tadi kan, how much I love surfing but it didn't make any difference. Maksudnya dia, walaupun dia suka sangat surfing, tapi tidak dapat merubah fikiran mak dia. So number three is not acceptable. Okay, so when you want to choose the best answer, when you want to answer a question like this, always refer to the paragraph. Beberapa kali pun tak apa. Make sure that you you are answering it correctly. Okay. Okay, number four. She won a couple of competitions. Okay, adakah uh, she ni merujuk pada Sarah atau mak dia? Tak tahu kan. Tapi sebab soalan dia tanya, what made Sarah's mother change her mind about her daughter's involvement in surfing? Okay, maksudnya soalan ni sudah dengan jelas tanya apa yang membuatkan mak dia berubah fikiran Uh, selepas uh, berkaitan dengan surfing. So bila jawab nombor 4 ni, she won a couple of competitions. Uh, she ni merujuk pada siapa? Mak dia ke atau dia? So boleh terima ke tak nombor 4 ni? Boleh terima ke tak? Boleh. Okay, sebabnya dia menjawab soalan. Soalan dia memang tanya. Apa? Apa? So saya dah kata sebab selepas dia menang beberapa competition. So nombor 4 and nombor 5 acceptable. Okay. Alright. Number seven. A few more. Okay. Uh, from paragraph seven. Ah, sekarang masuklah soalan kebat. Ingat tak saya kata tadi number 28 pun sekarang dah jadi soalan kebat. How do you know it's a kebat question? How do you know it's a hot question? When you see the word why. When you see the keyword why. Cuma number 28 if you notice lah kan. Okay. Number 28 walaupun dia hot question although dia um uh, Meminta awak untuk berfikir dulu sebelum jawab. At least dia uh, masih boleh mencari jawapan daripada teks. Bukannya your own opinion. Teks tu ada di sini. Okay, reason tu ada di dalam paragraph 7. Ah, so dia dia hot tapi dia masih berbantu. Masih ada panduan daripada paragraph. Okay, so kat sini jawapan dia. Soalan ni mudah. 
why do Malaysian surfers go to other countries to surf? Dia kata kenapa uh, rakyat Malaysia ni pergi meluncur ke negara lain? Kenapa? Okay, so kita cari idea dia, kita cari jawapannya. While most Malaysians avoid the beaches during the monsoon season, dia kata Malaysian akan uh, tak nak pergi ke pantai ataupun uh, laut apabila musim hujan. Kan orang Malaysia memang tak nak pergi ke laut waktu musim hujan kan? Okay. Um, surfers wait impatiently for it to arrive each year. So dia orang terpaksa menunggu dengan tak sabarnya tahun depan pula. Kan? So that is the only time when they are guaranteed the really big waves that they love. Sebab, sebab apa? Sebab masa tu je lah uh, yang mereka akan dapat rasa big waves tu. Uh, big waves yang tower over them tu kan? Okay. So masa tu je dia orang boleh rasa. Uh, during the rest of the year, top surfers, okay, uh, sementara nak tunggu tu kan, kalau orang surfer biasa dia boleh tunggu lah setahun sekali. Tapi kalau orang yang memang macam Melissa ni, yang top surfers ni, yang memang ber- ber- pergi bertanding ke keluar negara semua, okay, top surfers. So kita panggil dia top surfers. Top surfers ni find themselves having to travel. Uh, mereka sampai tahap um, pergi travel ke negara jiran. To neighboring surf spot. Okay, dia pergi ke negara jiran, uh, kat Thailand. Uh, ataupun Indonesia sebabnya nak cari uh, in the in this in search of the same condition sebab apa nak cari wave yang besar ni okey kalau kat negara kita dia bermusim kan dia bermusim kena tunggu time dia baru kita boleh dapat wave besar tu tapi uh, ada top surfers ni dia tak sabar dia nak tunggu setahun sekali tu lambat so dia akan pergi ke negara lain asalkan dia dapat rasa big wave tu okey so sekarang ni soalan dia tanya why Kenapa orang uh, Malaysian ni, uh, Malaysian surfers ni pergi luar negara? So macam mana kita nak jawab? Macam mana kita nak jawab? Okay, kita tengok one by one. Ada lapan choices of answers here. Okay, number one. Avoid the beaches during monsoon season. Okay, adakah ini sebabnya mereka pergi ke negara lain? So mereka nak avoid the beaches? Ah, tak logik kan? Nak avoid the beaches boleh je duduk rumah kan? Betul tak? Tak perlu nak pergi negara lain. So number one is wrong. Okay, what about number two? Surfers wait impatiently. Okay. Uh, peluncur-peluncur tu menunggu dengan tak sabar. So, adakah itu menjawab soalan kerana mereka pergi ke luar negara? Okay. Adakah ini jawapan yang boleh diterima? Adakah dia menjawab kehendak soalan? Dia menjawab tapi tidak lengkap. Impatiently for what? Dia tak sabar tunggu apa? Ha, so, number two is not acceptable. So that's why bila awak menjawab, make sure you know which part is relevant to the question. Okay? Alright, number three. Surfers wait impatiently for it to arrive. Okay, surfers wait impatiently for it to arrive. Tunggu apa? It ni merujuk pada apa? So it's unclear. Ah, so number four. That is the only time they are guaranteed. Guaranteed of what? Even ayat ni pun hanging. Okay, they are guaranteed big waves. Adakah ini sebabnya mereka pergi ke negara lain? Ah, adakah ini? Okay, so kita check. Kita double check. Betul ke? Ini jawapan dia. They are guaranteed big waves. Having to travel to to neighboring surf spots in Thailand and Indonesia in search of the same conditions. Maksudnya same conditions ni kan uh, ombak yang besar kan? Big waves kan? So, kalau dia pergi ke spot kat sana, dia akan dapat big wave yang sama. So, number five is acceptable. Okay, number six. <coughs> number six pun, sama idea dia. They are guaranteed really big waves that they love. Bila dia pergi soft spot ni, dia akan dapat big wave yang orang suka. So, number five, number six, acceptable. What about number seven? In search of the same conditions. Condition apa? So, this number seven is unclear. So, remember, bila unclear je, memang jawapan tidak akan diterima. Walaupun you jawab dalam bentuk phrases, walaupun you jawab dalam bentuk fragment, tapi jawapan tu mesti betul. Idea must come true. Ah, itulah keyword untuk reading comprehension. Idea must come true. Okay? Alright, number seven. Ah, sorry, number eight. To travel to neighbouring surf spot. Okay, kenapa nak pergi neighbouring uh, neighboring surf spot? Nak buat apa? Sebab nak, tra- nak travel sahaja ke? So, kena ada perkataan Uh, big waves tu. So idea of uh, nak pergi surf spot tu sebab nak dapatkan big waves tu kena ada. So remember uh, reading comprehension part idea must come true. Bila awak rephrase jawapan pun mesti idea must come true. Okay? Alright? 
Next, number eight. Okay, almost there, almost there. Yang ni saya suka sangat tanda soalan ni hari tu. Okay, uh, before we go serving, we're always on our phones. Okay, before we go serving, sebelum kami pergi meluncur, we are always on our phones. Kami sentiasa memegang handphone, melihat handphone. Okay, checking the weather forecast. Melihat cuaca. Okay, yelah nak pergi serving, kena tahu hujan ke tak hujan kan. Kalau pergi-pergi, tiba-tiba hari hujan, sia-sia saja kan. So that's why they need, uh, they are always on phones and to check the weather forecast. Okay, Sarah explains. We're interested in when it's going to rain and how much rain there'll be. Okay, kami sangat nak tahu um, adakah hari akan hujan uh, and then kalau hujan pun hujan lebat ke, hujan sikit-sikit. Uh, so dia kata itulah maksud dia. We're interested in when it's going to rain and how much rain there'll be. Okay, the temperature tends to drop too. Uh, suhu pun boleh jatuh kan. Jadi sebab tu nak check, uh, nak check weather, nak sentiasa check uh, dekat uh, dekat phone. Okay. Knowing the wind condition is what really makes the difference for us. Okay. Uh, tapi dia kata yang paling penting, kalau kita tahu pergerakan angin, keadaan angin, uh, itulah yang akan membuatkan uh, kami boleh pergi atau tidak. What makes uh, the difference for us. Itu maksud dia. Kalau kami tahu keadaan angin, uh, itulah yang akan menentukan sama ada kami boleh keluar atau tidak. Okay. So we know that's what affects what the waves will be like because dia kata angin itulah yang akan uh, memberi kesan, yang akan uh, memberi kesan kepada wave. Jadi dia kata we know that's what affects what the waves will be like. Kami tahu uh, wind condition ni lah sebenarnya yang akan memberi kesan kepada wave yang akan jadi nanti. When we think the waves are ideal for. Okay, so ini ideal lagi tak, tak ada kaitan lah. Okay, so now. From paragraph 8, they usually a two or a three car convoy in case of emergency. Okay, what type of emergency do you think they might face? Ha, dalam ni tak ada cakap pun pasal, pasal emergency. Ha, so inilah dia soalan kebat yang kena fikir yang tak ada dalam teks. Okay, so dia kata what type of emergency do you think yang anda fikir? Maksudnya you can give the answer outside the text. Boleh bagi yang logic. Okay, let's see. Let's check the, the question, uh, the answers. Okay, dia kata keyword dia adalah emergency. Apa maksud emergency? Emergency means sesuatu yang kita tak sangka, betul? So let's check whether adakah jawapan-jawapan ini memenuhi uh, maksud emergency. Kalau dia memenuhi uh, maksud emergency, that's the answer. Okay? Alright, number one. Accidents. Adakah accidents dianggap sebagai emergency? Yes. Tak ada orang yang nak accident kan? So, accidents uh, boleh dianggap sebagai emergency. What about injuries? Sama juga konsep dia. Tak ada orang yang nak mencederakan badan sendiri. So, injuries also considered as emergency. Okay, drowning. Drowning. Adakah drowning emergency? What do you think? Okay. For your information, number three is not acceptable because they are surfers. Okay? They are surfers. They face big waves. Takkanlah mereka tak tahu berenang. Betul? So that's why number three is not acceptable. Itulah dia. I want you to be careful. That's why I'm telling you to be careful. Give a logical answer. Put some thinking. Put a, uh, give yourself a time to think first before you answer. Okay. Satu markah tu sangat berharga dalam SPM. Okay. What about number four? Loss. Tiba-tiba sesat. Tengah-tengah uh, convoy, tiba-tiba satu convoy tersalah masuk jalan, sesat. Is that an emergency? Yes. What about punctured tires? Is that an emergency? Yes. What about tsunami? You are in the midst of a convoy and suddenly a tsunami comes your way. Is that an emergency? Yes. Okay. What about a shark attack? You were on the way to the sea. You parked your car. Suddenly, there's a shark attack. When you were in the sea, suddenly there's a shark and you don't know there's a shark there and it, it, it attacks you. Is that an emergency? Yes. Okay, it's logical, right? Okay, and finally number eight. 
you were convoying with your friends' cars and suddenly one of you being kidnapped. Is that an emergency? Yes. Okay, so basically, as long it is, as it is logical to answer the question, the idea comes through, your answer will be accepted. That's why I'm telling you again and again, idea must come true and the answer must be logical. Okay, all right, so far so good. Okay, uh, we are left with a few minutes more. I'm trying to finish this part. Okay, number nine, from paragraph nine, according to Sarah, what false impression do many people have of surface? Okay, from paragraph nine, according to Sarah, ramai orang, what false impression? Apa maksud false impression? Salah anggap. Okay, what false impression do many people have of surface? Dia kata, apakah, kenapa ramai orang, apakah, uh, Tanggapan yang salah tu. Ha, okay. So, kita cari dalam ni. All surface need energy and patience. But for me, it's sure determination that gets me back on the uh, surfboard, surfboard again and again. That's a common misconception. So, misconception tu sinonim kepada false impression. Ha, so, bila kita jumpa perkataan yang sinonim, kata sama maksud. So, we know the answer must be around here. So, there's a common misconception that surfers are all young guys. So, this is the answer. So, this is the false impression. Okay. So, your answer will be, uh, should be, surfers are all young guys. So, these are, uh, this is the answer. So, number one is wrong, number two is wrong, number three is wrong. Number four, is this the same idea as this one? Yes. What about number five? Yes. Number uh, number six, are we talking about female? No. Young guys, male, right? So, number six is wrong. And number seven, we are not talking about uniting people. We are talking about the false conception of the surface. So, that's why the answer accepted are number four, number five. Okay, so actually there are questions that is easily, sp or you can easily find the answers by if you know the synonym of certain words, the keywords. Okay, all right. So number 30, uh, my favorite. I always love this question because I can see many answers. <laughs> Okay, I'll, uh, everything under the roof. Okay, suggest one way. So the, the question is asking you to give one way. Suggest one way to encourage your classmates to take up surfing. Beri cadangan, okay, beri satu cadangan, cara-cara uh, untuk menggalakkan rakan sekelas untuk mengambil, uh, untuk join surfing, untuk sama-sama surfing. Okay, give a reason why you think this would be effective. And ada berikan sebab, give a reason, kenapa cara yang kita cadangkan ni akan membuatkan kawan merasa uh, nak join. Uh, itu maksud soalan ni. So, ke, number one, kena bagi cara nak attract kawan untuk join surfing. Dan kedua, kenapa cara ni uh, boleh buat kawan seronok nak surfing. Okay, so, number one, uh, one of the candidates answer, Tunjuk video orang surfing. Kenapa nak kena tunjuk video? Sebab apa? bila dia tengok, they can see how interesting surfing is. Bila dia tengok yang surfing ni seronok, so dia nak join. So acceptable. Dua markah. Okay, what about number two? Sample number two. Create a surfing club. Okay, nak tarik orang untuk join kita surfing, buat club. Okay, jom kita ramai-ramai buka club supaya kita ramai-ramai boleh belajar. So they can learn surfing together. So bila... Uh, they join dengan kawan-kawan, dia jadi seronok kan? So that's why uh, they can learn surfing together. So that's why these answers were given two marks. And finally, number three, buy surfing boards for friends. Wow, bagi beli board tu bagi dekat kawan sebagai hadiah. Itu cara dia. So kenapa? Sebab dia kata bila dia ada, bolehlah dia guna. Barulah, barulah dia boleh pergi surfing. So this is also logical. So that's why uh, number three also given uh, two marks. Okay. All right. So that's it about a reading comprehension. Okay. Summary we have done. Uh, 
we, we don't have time today but i have done uh, the previous video right previous class on summary very detailed one you can go back to that video to uh, to know how to answer summary the easy way and also uh, maybe if we have time we can continue with uh, novel question and poem question which is uh, dear mr kilmer okay so uh, if you have any question you can always post uh, on the chat i will uh, try to answer the questions later okay so i think we don't have time for summary we don't have time for novel maybe we can continue continue in the next video inshallah if i am give if uh, if we have time again all right so uh, that is all from me today so let's see whether we have a question or not okay Hi Thank you. So, hi Amira. Hi Pakrol. Come on, shout out your school name here. Let me read your school name. Hi Alia, Tamamalati. Hi Nadira, Tamamalati. Use Farina, Tamamalati. Oh, ramanya SMK Tamamalati. Sharul Shafiq, Tastapa Indah. Hi, Sharul. Hi, Mamuda. Ariza Kwan, Section 5. Thank you for being with me. Azim. Hazim from Tinggi Setapak. Hi Hazim. Hi Adriana. There's a tone who's on. Asro Keramat Wangsa, is it? Danish Padang Temba. Alif Sofia. Sha'alam. Hi Alia. Nadia Hana from Setia Wangsa. Hi. Thank you for being here. Saya Zikri. Setapak Tinggi. Eh, tinggi Setapak. Ain Farhana, Tama Melati. Thank you, thank you, people. Thank you, Amira from Hillcrest. Harza Kwan from Section Five. Lukman from Tama Melati. Uh, we have also from Sri Rampai, Anis, Hadeep High School, Atira Section Five. Sri Ampang, Jasmi. Thank you, Ashok. Oh, Nabila from Section 2. Ah, hi, Adele. Hi, boleh dengar tak? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, oh thanks God. Very good problem again and again. So, by the way, thank you so much, Teacher Su. Welcome. Right. Tadi ada soalan ke? Itulah, I did not realize ada, that. I don't. Sebab kalau tak ada soalan, I rasa ada soalan. Okay. Ah, tak, sebelum tu, I just want to comment a little bit lah because I'm very excited with the, um, to see when the student, when the kids, they are trying to answering, you know, yeah, when the time you I pop can... up, question, ah, you understand or not? You try to show the comprehension text and you trying to discuss, yet they started to give the answer. Tak kisahlah betul ke tak, but they nice yeah, guess, okay? okay. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. I, uh, the one that I mentioned just now is keywords for today is familiarize yourself with proverbs. Uh, yeah. Two words of the day. So that means, meaning to say is that, kids, you have to go and check the proverb and read uh, an article, try to understand. Sebab bila tak faham, it's very, you know, very difficult. Lagi satu, paper two, I guess it's a bit challenging. Right? Yes. Right or not? Now it's become a technical paper. It's, it must be, yeah. the answer must be there. Answer must be accurate. 
That's it. Yeah, complete with the keywords given sometimes. And then, but then, teacher Su said that um, if you know the techniques yes. untuk menjawab uh, hot question, much be better. Bila techniques tu yang penting. Tapi berpuas hati lah. Terima kasih Cikgu Su atas teknik yang diberikan. I pun macam melopong tengok, wow, not enough lah two hours actually. So, <laughs> nak macam nak lah. <laughs> Actually, we have two more, two more parts that we, we don't have time to explain. Novel is another part that can help students to score, actually. There are ways to score for novel question. Hmm. So, uh, we seen just now, um, hopefully they, they, they stay tuned with us. The question yeah. yang I nak tanya, just the time. Answering the question, oh my. Thank you, people. Is there, yeah, three, is there four, three. They are, they are answering the question that I posted just now. Yeah, yeah um, just look at that. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Teacher Su? Yeah. Ah, okay, untuk uh, certain question, bila bila kita tengok balik banyak section, they have uh, section A, section B, C and everything. And then, uh, do you have any advice or suggested time for them to spend per question? Because they've got to read, scan the, the, the text, the short text and everything. And have to think, and then sometimes I'm scared mm -hmm. that they spend more time. time. Yeah, too much time on one question. Okay. They are given. They are given two hours and fifteen minutes. Okay, for uh, for four sections. Okay, and they okay. are required to write two writings, summary and novel. Okay, both mm -hmm. uh, big marks. Okay, summary fifteen, uh, novel fifteen. So that's uh, that's already thirty marks. Okay. So they have to know they can only spend uh, for section A the most is like 15 to 20 minutes. They have to scan, uh, they have to read, they have to underline the keywords, then choose the answers and then go to information transfer. Okay, information transfer is actually, uh, I always tell my students, if you can identify the correct information, you can get full mark easily because it's only, you are only transferring the information. You right. are- I just the, the answer straight away. I yeah, love that you, part of information. Actually, yeah, you just it need helps. to find. So don't spend too much time on information transfer. Ten minutes will be the most. Pay attention mm -hmm. to comprehension, a uh, summary, and literature. Poems only five five marks. Still, you need to score poem questions because it's five marks and it's very easy question. It's a uh, repeat a repetition of previous year's question. They will use and use and use again. So, uh, actually. You need to focus on section C, and section D more, more, okay, rather than yeah, reading, reading comprehension. Section C is reading comprehension, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah which is the now. Yeah, you can just not not waste time uh, of copying the text, right? Just straight to the point. Yeah, I think that's all for me. So, anything yeah. else from the kids, from the students? That's all. That's all. But I'm so so glad they are that's here I, at this I hour. Think they're ready for the exam. <laughs> Yeah, so sorry for I the technical know. errors, yeah, people. Sorry for the technical errors. <laughs> oh, welcome, Amira. They need a welcome. slide, I think. Yeah. Oh, teacher Amy. Teacher, so she's a teacher. Oh, thank you, teacher. Thank you, Shirazi. Thank you. See you again, inshallah. We have Razaki again. Yeah. Thank oh, you, thank teacher. You. Bye. Good luck for your SPM one month time. All the best. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready, They're ready to sit for the exam. Welcome. Shabbat. Welcome, people. Welcome, Haris. Well, don't check Instagram. Don't shout. <laughs> thank you. Thank hey. you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you still remember Nabila last time she's talking? She's been talking about linkers. Yeah. Oh my god. I totally forgot about that. I actually I had that in my slides. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Nabila, PM to P your Chegu. Ah, Nabila, please PM me, Nabila. I had the list with me, the as lepas novel actually. Oh my remember god. That. So, so sorry, so sorry. Okay, I think that's all right, Adele. Uh, please, yeah, yeah. Um, 
at this hour you have one one uh, one month to go before your SPM before you are going for the war uh, during this COVID nineteen season. I hope you stay strong. Okay, stay positive. Okay, uh, kids. I'm sure Allah is with you. You will be able to score English, inshallah. Okay, so that's all from me. All the best. All the best from me, teacher. Adele. Bye. Bye. Bye.